Good day. Here are the 30 frequently asked questions that we receive from clients about I-485. Question one, what is the I-485 application and who can file the I-485 application? The I-485 is called adjustment of status. Usually it is the final step before you receive your green card in the United States. It can only be filed while you are physically inside the United States. Well, to file I-485, usually you need to have a basis, like either family-based or employment-based, either I-130 or I-140. And of course, there are some other basis for I-485. Should I file the I-485 application together with my family members or separately? Either is fine. You can file the I-485 together with your immediate family members. Or, if needed, your family members, your dependents, can file I-485 after you. Can I file the I-485 when another immigration petition is still pending? Yes, that's a big advantage for I-485. Even before your other immigration petition, such as I-130 or I-140 is approved, you can already file I-485. You can either file I-485 concurrently, together, with your I-130 or I-140, or when those applications are pending, as long as your priority date is current. For example, you may file your NIW I-140 application together with your I-485 adjustment of status application. What documents and information are typically required for filing the I-485 application? Usually, the documents and the information needed uh, are those that can show you have maintained valid visa status in the U.S. and the basis for your green card application is still there, not changed yet, that you have abide to immigration law in the past in the United States. What are the benefits of filing an I-485 application? There are many benefits for I-485. For example, after filing I-485, you can stay in the U.S. legally without any other visa status, even if your other visa status expires after that. And you can work and travel after filing I-485. We'll explain more later. Will filing the I-485 application affect my current visa status? Generally speaking, filing I-485 should not affect your current visa status. You will have dual status. One is AOS, adjustment of status, provided by the filing of your I-485. The other is your other visa status, such as H-1B, O-1, L-1, B-2, F-1, J-1, etc. And even after I-485 is filed, you may still extend or change your visa status. Can I file the I-485 application if my current visa status is already expired? And what about J-1? It depends. For example, if you are the immediate relative, like spouse or parent of a U.S. citizen, even if your visa status has expired, you can still file I-485 uh, as long as you enter the U.S. legally. However, uh, if you apply I-485 with other bases, well, the expiration of your visa status may affect the approval of your I-485. It's case by case. And if you held J-1 visa status in the past, you may be subject to the two-year home country residence requirement. But even if so, you can consider apply for a waiver of that requirement. Can I change the basis of I-485 after the application is filed? Yes, the USCIS does allow change of basis even after your I-485 application has already been filed. For example, if you filed as an employment-based immigration petition, later if you are eligible, you can change to a family-based immigration petition and vice versa. And within like employment based immigration, you can change from EB1 to EB2, from EB2 to EB3, and vice versa. What if I worked in the U.S. without authorization in the past? Again, it depends. First, if you are an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, then the past work without authorization generally is not a problem. And even if you are not, 
like for example if you are uh, employment based immigrant in the EB1, 2, EB3, EB4 categories, then you know if you worked without authorization for up to 180 days, you may get a waiver under the 245K regulation. What if I violated immigration law or other laws in the past? Well, again, it depends uh, if you are immediate relative of U.S. citizen or permanent resident. You may apply for I-601 waiver of inadmissibility. And if the violation is relatively minor, you may not even need to file such a waiver. Well, it, of course, depends on the specifics. What if I move during the I-485 application? If you move, you will need to file the AR-11 form to the USCIS. This can be done online through the internet. Uh, in addition, you may also want to call or uh, contact the USCIS to make sure they have your updated address so they can mail the approval notice and the green card to you. What other applications can be filed together with the I-485? You can file I-765 for EAD and I-131 for advanced parole together with your I-485. This will make your life more comfortable while your I-485 is pending. You will be able to use the I-485 based EAD to work and can use the advanced parole to travel. What if I have waited a long time and still do not receive my EAD AP combo card? Well, if that happens, you can contact the USCIS, try to expedite your application. And uh, at New Wei Ming Law Group, we can also help you to deal with the USCIS to speed up the approval of your applications. How long does it take for the I-485 application to be approved? It varies. Some of our applicants received their I-485 approvals within two months or three months after filing, and others received approvals like uh, uh, six months, seven months, and some received their approvals 12 months after filing. Can I travel abroad when my I-485 application is pending? Yes, if you have the Advanced Pro, you can use that to travel, or the EAD AP combo card to travel without a visa. You can leave the U.S. and come back without a visa. Or alternatively, if you have H-1B or L-1 visas that are still unexpired, the visa on your passport are not expired yet, you can also use those visas to travel. If you are holding F-1 or J-1 visa status, usually you will need to wait until the advanced parole is approved and then depart the U.S. Otherwise, your F-485 may be considered as abandoned, so do not risk that. Can I change jobs when the I-485 application is pending? Yes, you can change job. If your case is family-based, of course, changing job, there's no impact to your I-485. Even if your case is employment-based, well, uh, if you change job after I-485 has been pending for 180 days, then as long as the new employer can provide a supplement J form to you, it should be okay. And if your case is self-petitioned, EB1A or NIW, change job usually should not affect your I-485 approval, as long as you still intend to work in the same specialty of field. When should I get the medical exam and fingerprinting done for the I-485? For the fingerprinting, you need to wait for the USCIS notice and then go to the support center to get that done. It's called biometrics. They will also take your photos. For the medical exam, there are options. Well, you can get that done uh, right before the I-485 submission and submit the medical exam called I-693 form together with I-485. Or you can wait uh, and submit the medical exam later. What if I get married when my employment-based I-485 is pending? Well, if you get married while your I-485 is pending, you can add your spouse as the derivative beneficiary if your case is employment-based. If your case is family-based, well, it depends. For example, if you are in the uh, unmarried beneficiary category and then you get married, well, your priority date and the cutoff date for your application may change. 
uh, or you may even become ineligible for the benefit. Uh, but again, if you are employment-based, well, then you can surely add your spouse as the derivative beneficiary, and that person well, may get the green card together with you or shortly after you. But again, as you know, F-45 can only be filed while you are physically located inside the United States. Will there be an interview before the I-45 approval? It depends. For family-based green card applications, usually, yes, there will be an interview before F-45 approval. For employment-based, it's case by case. Uh, maybe like uh, one-third of the total applicants will receive an interview notice. That changed from time to time. Well, before the former President Trump came into office, the interview for employment-based F-45 is relatively rare. Then it became more frequent, and then, well, the frequency dropped again, so it changed constantly. What are the common I-485 interview questions? Usually during the interview, the immigration officer will ask about your past visa status history, about where you are working, and uh, about where you are living, you know, also about your personal background, personal history, well, also information like uh, your name, date of birth, whether other names you have used, is there any uh, violation of the immigration law or other laws, and uh, also uh, background check questions regarding to the security of the United States. Also, if you are the derivative beneficiary, the immigration officer will also ask about your family relationship to the primary beneficiary. What kind of documents are required for the I-485 interview? Those documents will be related to your past immigration history, like the approval notices from the USCIS, or for example, if you are an international student, you are expected to bring your I-20 forms and your transcripts and your diplomas. If you are a visiting scholar, you are expected to bring the DS-2019 forms. Uh, if you enter the U.S. using a visa, you can bring a copy of the visa. And uh, if you are the derivative beneficiary, you can bring documents showing the family relationship to the primary beneficiary. What if there are errors in my I-45 application that have already been submitted? If, for example, after you submitted the I-485 application, you found that there are some mistakes in the form or other supporting documents, that's okay. You can contact the USCIS to correct those. Or, if there will be an interview, you can bring up the issue during the interview to correct that. This happened to some of our clients. Uh, you know, they found that they uh, well, provided the incorrect information unintendedly, and later they corrected it, and that did not affect their green card approval. Is the financial support form I-864 required for my I-485 application? Usually, you will not need to bring the I-864 uh, financial support form. On the other hand, if your case is family-based, then usually, yes, the petitioner will need to fill the I-864 form and uh, also provide documents showing there are sufficient income or asset. And uh, if needed, a joint sponsor can also be used. Uh, to provide additional income and asset uh, to support the beneficiary's green card application. Is an employment verification letter required for my I-485 approval? If the case is family-based, usually the employment verification letter is not needed. If the I-485 application is employment-based, then uh, the employer may need to provide a supplement J form and sign the form that serves for the purpose of employment verification. However, if the case is a self-petitioned EB1A or NIW category, then the Supplement J form is not needed. However, the immigration officer may still want to confirm that the beneficiary still works in the same field, the same tool when the I-140 was filed and approved. What if I do not have some of the required documents for I-485? 
sometimes you may use the alternative uh, documents. For example, some of our applicants were born in a third world country and somehow uh, do not have the birth record. Um, you know, for example, if they were born in a village or remote area. Well, in that case, they can use affidavits and the school records to help show their birth. And sometimes, you know, because of uh, changes in international politics, or other issues, the applicant simply cannot get some personal documents um, for the I-485. In that case, with proper explanation, some alternative documents may be used. This worked for our applicants. For example, some of them were born uh, when their home country was a colony, and later the country gained independence or the person moved at a very young age to another country. Well, in that case, we helped them to use alternative documents, and their cases were subsequently approved. What if I receive an RFE or NOID, namely Request for Evidence or Notice of Intent to Deny, from the uses for my I-485? Well, in that case, of course, first to figure out what the RFE or NOID is about, and then you can address the questions Accordingly, our law firm has helped many applicants to receive approvals after receiving the IFE or NOID. What are the common reasons for I-485 I RFEs or NOIDs? Well, uh, sometimes it is about medical exam. Sometimes it is about update uh, or uh, supplement to the already submitted documents. Sometimes it's the applicants had some minor violation of the immigration law or other laws or had other complicated history in the past and uh, that can all cause the USCIS to issue the IFE or NOID. Again, well, if that happens, first figure out what the government is asking about and then if needed, our law firm can help you to respond to those. What if my I-485 application is denied? Well, of course, we do not want the application to be denied. However, if that, that happened, that's not the end of the world. Well, uh, in a variety of cases, we have helped applicants to file the motion to reopen or file a new I-485 after the initial denial and subsequently received I-485 approvals. And in some cases, uh, I-601 waiver of inadmissibility application may also be needed. What are the common reasons for I-485 denial? Well, uh, the common reasons include, for example, past violation of immigration law or past criminal record or some applicants uh, or past members of certain groups. Some applicants, well, uh, they simply did not provide uh, persuasive documents to show they have maintained valid immigration visa status or that they do have uh, something like a family relationship with the primary applicant or that uh, they have a valid uh, job offer in the U.S. or they have the required qualifications. Well, uh, in all these situations, as long as your application is bona fide, as long as you have reasonable explanation and can find the suitable documents, your F-485 can still be approved after a motion to reopen or a refiling of I-485. Well, contact us if needed. How can New Weiming Law Group help my I-45 application and green card needs? We have helped numerous applicants, thousands of them, to receive their I-485 approvals in both family-based and employment-based cases and uh, with applicants who had various complicated backgrounds. Well, usually, you know, that's not a problem. We can help our clients to receive their I-485 approvals. If you have any questions, you can contact us at info at nwmlaw.com. You know, see our screen on our video. Uh, we can help you. Thank you.